Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Wednesday service. We so much appreciate you. Uh, and uh, it was good to see everybody on Sunday. It's good to be back in church. Such a privilege just to see people, how people have grown. And uh, it's a wonderful sight, isn't it? And as per government regulation, you know, they've given us some, uh, the, the, the authority to meet Sunday morning, of which we'll be doing that, but uh, on a Wednesday like this and Sunday evening, we shall continue with these videos. So please uh, make sure that uh, you are in tune in this, uh, buy enough data, be part of that. But on Sunday morning, join us for church in the building, and that's an exciting time. Uh, as you continue with your house church uh, on these two other occasions, on Sunday evening and on Wednesday, please uh, just continue uh, believing God that, you know, lockdowns will be reduced and we shall go further into just our regular services uh, uh, that we normally do uh, uh, Sunday evening and Wednesday uh, to just be gathering together and having a good time in church. There's no prayer tomorrow uh, because, uh, you know, we uh, now meeting in church, which is one of those things, and we'll pray more when we meet together. If there's any change to that, or we are going to resume again the Thursday prayer meetings uh, through the app Zoom, we shall let you know. But right now, uh, we have uh, put those uh, on hold because we are resuming back and we want to make sure that everything goes back to the flow that we used to have. Um, remember also to give as that is uh, priority. We are on and uh, please give. Uh, you can see the account numbers. We have the Access Bank account. We have the GT Bank account. Uh, please uh, put your money there. Mark it as such as tithe, offering, or a pledge so that we can put it to the appropriate things. Uh, we have that uh, Pastor Caleb Tuchuku has found a building. We're negotiating on that uh, and uh, offers have been put across. Uh, once that comes through, we need to uh, sort out those things. Please uh, uh, be a giver, be part of this, uh, and God will bless you. Uh, tonight, uh, on this Wednesday evening, I have a sermon that I've titled The Slippery Tree. Uh, that means doctrine that you listen to. Doctrine shapes life. Doctrine aims you at something. The aim of doctrine is to target you at something. And if you're not careful, it will put you on a slippery tree or a slippery path that will lead you uh, away from where God wants you to be. And uh, let's take some time and just listen to this message on uh, the slippery tree. And uh, God bless you. Matthew 16 verses 5 to 12 again this uh, Wednesday evening. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful time. I'm looking forward to Sunday uh, to see everybody once again. So please, uh, uh, let's make time for that. Be in church this coming Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, uh, let's move on in the word of God this uh, Wednesday. I hope your week is going good. I hope uh, uh, God is putting things together. Amen. Uh, 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 Matthew 16 verses 5 to 12. Uh, the Bible reads, Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have, no, we have taken no bread? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, All oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have bread, you have bought, you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves uh, of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up? No, the seven loaves or of the four thousand and how many large baskets you took up? How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to be beware of the living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not, he did not tell them to be aware of the living of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this Wednesday service. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing. God, thank you for God restoring us back in church. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. 
God, as I reduce you, increase, speak this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, English and uh, pretty much every language has uh, things that are called similes. Uh, a simile is a figure of speech that expresses a resemblance between things of different kinds. A metaphor, for example, is a simile, but used as a figure of speech in which an expression is used to refer to something that it does not literally denote in order to suggest a similarity. Having said that, uh, I have a very, uh, uh, you know, since I've been in Nigeria, there is uh, an adage or a similar metaphor that is uh, has taken part of my thinking. And uh, it states like this, it's my favorite metaphor here in Nigeria, it says, uh, uh, every tree is slippery to a dying monkey. Uh, this statement is a metaphor about someone who has an inevitable end. And no matter what effort they do, they can't escape it. You can't escape that. It's a, uh, the tree is slippery to the dying monkey. So please just bear with me. I want to use this metaphor and uh, bring forth the truth. Um, Jesus used metaphors a lot. And uh, uh, on, uh, in our scripture, that's a he uses a metaphor of bread. Be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mark 8, 15. Then he charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven the live of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Uh, here he is, he uses the metaphor of bread and leaven. And the metaphor is simply this, that uh, a bread, when you're making bread, you realize that bread uh, carries with it, uh, you know, you put yeast in it. And the yeast is in a little flour uh, or leaven. And it, it, it begins to swell it up and change the shape of what it was originally. This is also true also of life. Uh, that if you are not careful with life, you can be leavened. This is not just speaking metaphorically of bread. No, it's talking of a human life. Same as my metaphor that I use of a slippery uh, tree that every, you know, to a dying monkey, every tree is slippery. In other words, when you are infected and you've got an inevitable end, you cannot escape it. But you know what? You try to, the monkey will try to climb the tree because it's already dying. It will be slippery and falling. It's an old monkey probably or a diseased monkey, but it's had got an inevitable end. This is used a lot in Nigeria by certain people to just tell you, you know what, you've got an inevitable end. If you continue like this, you are going to end up in this place. And that's what I want to use on you tonight, that if you continue on certain paths, you continue doing certain things, you continue listening to certain people, you continue reading certain material, you are going to end up becoming that slippery monkey that is God has no, every tree becomes slippery. It's got an inevitable end. It cannot avoid it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had a very persuasive or persuasive doctrine and also perversive. It was not just persuasive, it was perversive. It twisted you. They had a perversive and persuasive influence by teachings that would modify and transform humans into something that God did not want. This is true till today. Doctrine, listen to me everybody. Jesus is teaching about doctrine. Doctrine can put you on a path where everything becomes slippery. Doctrine can turn you into what you're not. It will leaven you. What you listen to, the teachings, the books, the people you listen to. If you're not careful, they can put you on a path to destruction. Doctrine is that. Do doctrine is any set of tenets or teachings. The 
purpose of doctrine is to aim you at something. Doctrine is like an arrow. We put it in a ball and the shaft is doctrine. And you aim at a target and you shoot. Doctrine is like that. It's what's going to make you hit the target. God's aim on your life is to make you get to heaven. Jesus came to make you to get to heaven. A good church, a good pastor, a good set of believers will lead you and put doctrine in you that is going to make you aim for heaven. Not aim for wealth, not aim for material, not aim for intelligence, not aim for... It's aim, good doctrine, church doctrine should aim you to get to heaven. It shouldn't be something that is aiming you to go and become wealthy. Nothing wrong with being wealthy, being intelligent, but that should never be the aim of good doctrine. Every doctrine has an aim. John 7 verses 16 to 15, Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he is who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether it is I speak from my own authority. There are teachings, listen to me everybody, that are aimed to make you miss heaven. They are in the church, they are in society, they are in every culture. Their aim is to make you miss heaven. And they come and they are sought. 2 Corinthians 11.13 For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms him transforms himself into an angel of light therefore it is not a great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works look at this for a moment paul looks at the end the end result of every doctrine it has a name that it's aiming for it has a target my target as a Christian is one day walk through the pearly gates, walk on the streets of God and be with Jesus for the rest of my days, for eternity. But there are doctrines that are not aiming for that. They have taught people to aim for wealth. They have taught people to aim for big houses and fame in the earth. And with that, that is not Christian. That is doctrine that is just going to ruin you. It's making you into that monkey that its inevitable end is death. It's appointed to a man who wants to die. And once you die, what's going to happen after that? You could have all the wealth, the materialism of the world. You could have all the beautiful things that the earth has to give. But the end result, what is your aim in life? And what makes you hit the aim is the doctrine you have. Things you read. The people what you read. Oh my God. Who you listen to. What entertains you. The things you've placed yourself in. Let me ask you, when was the last time you picked up the word of God and read it? When was the last time you just said, let me read the Bible today. Let me dedicate my day to the word of God. I can tell you, even in this lockdown, many of us didn't touch the Bible. We don't read the doctrine of God, which is the word of God that directs people. But we are consumed by videos on WhatsApp. Videos on YouTube, videos on, we are consumed by that. We are consumed by social media, video games and the television and all that is involved there. That has taken your attention. It's a doctrine. How is it? You know, it's amazing to me how much people have been consumed. Listen to me. I'm not speaking against anybody. I'm just trying to bring a truth to you. 
and you will dissect it by yourself. I'm amazed at how many Christians or perceived Christians who are consumed by Christian music but don't read the Bible. They know every song by, oh, I can have heard Nathaniel Bass, I've heard, oh, so and so, Hill song, everybody. They know every lyric, but they don't know the Word of God. To read the Word of God, doctrine of your church, do you know it? What does your church teach? It's not just everything says Jesus. He says here in Second Corinthians, in Corinthians, we read that that he says that you know, a hey, Satan himself clothes, clothes himself as an angel of light. His ministers do the same. Doesn't mean that you have to get up and find the doctrine. What is the doctrine of your church? Oh yes, you can sing the, you can go to a church and you know, worship songs are the same, praise songs are the same. But the doctrine of your church, what does it teach? Have you ever sat down with your pastor and said, what's the doctrine of our church? Is it to get wealthy? Is it to become more intellectual? Is it to become, you know, uh, uh, you know, flamboyant people in society? Or to build a bigger building? What is the aim of our church? That should be questions you should be asking. And when they show you the doctrine, validate it. Is this doctrine going to get me to heaven? The aim of the church, the aim of Jesus Christ, the aim of all that we do in our church here is to get every person listening to me in this church, listening to this, uh, to get you to heaven. It's not to get money in your pocket. Though you will have, God is a blesser. It's not to get you to have a fat belly and eat good life. No, my aim in this church is to get you one day to heaven. If I'll see you in heaven, if you see me in heaven, then our doctrine was good. But Jesus teaches that there is bad doctrine. The doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's leaven, it swells you up. It brings pride in you. It leads you astray from the will of God. Proverbs 11, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. This is God. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. In your doctrine, in the tenets and the teachings of the church, there should be a hate of evil. And I'm talking here, there should be that. I'm just talking here doctrines that you should see. There should be a hate of evil. There should be something being taught, this is evil. You can't do that. We find that the disciples have a miscue. They miss it. They thought Jesus was talking about bread. They did not buy bread that day. They did not do this and they have a miscue. I was listening to a perceived prophet per se and he was uh, talking for a few moments. I said let me listen to him. And this man was talking and uh, not in one moment did he mention the name of Jesus. And he was talking about a great spirit. And you know what? Oh, la, 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 la. But the great spirit will help you. But the great spirit. And, and I, I realized you know what? This guy is not Christian. Though he is using Christian lingo. He is using Christian languages. But I could say you know what? He's using Christian terms. But you know what? I could tell you know what? This guy there is something else here. He's talking about the great spirit. And the great spirit will do this to you. The great spirit. Which great spirit? The disciples miss it. Because they don't understand the concept of metaphors. Most people in this generation are being misled into death traps. Listen, what's the point of being in a church your whole life and end up in hell. What's the point of that? What's the point? What would it gain a man if he gains all the wealth in the world but loses his own soul? You have to know the doctrine. Where are you aimed at? You see, I would rather sit in a church where I'm being rebuked every day but I'm aimed at heaven. 
I'm being put straight. I'm being, but I'm going to enter into heaven. Then sit in a place whereby they are patting me on my back and making me go astray. Mark 8, 17, 18. But Jesus being aware of it. Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not perceive or not understand? Is it your heart? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes you do not see. And having ears when you do not hear. And do you not remember? And Jesus tells them, I could make bread. But I'm talking about here something more dangerous. Jesus could make bread. Hey, do a miracle. 5,000 people could get fed. 4,000 people could get fed. That's not the problem of feeding your stomach. But there's something more dangerous is pointing at. Doctrines that are out there. There's doctrine. Every culture has doctrine. Your family has doctrine. Teachings that they've taught you. Be careful of these doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When you hear preachers speak, listen for the truth of Jesus Christ. Listen if anybody still talks about heaven. Oh, I've heard many sermons on destiny. And I believe in destiny with God. But destiny, that's your destination should be heaven. It's not so much that I have a destiny that, you know what, I've got a car, I've got a few things in my life. That's not it. Your destiny should be ultimately heaven. Galatians 3.1 Oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Another fact you should look upon is not just Jesus being preached. Jesus being preached as crucified and rose from the grave. Talked about you know evil but you talk about crucifixion resurrection Heaven. If you do this, you miss heaven. If you do that, you need to say, that is needed. Otherwise, you be the monkey with an inevitable end. Doctrine can put you into a place with an inevitable end. You are going to end up in the wrong place. Whether you like it or not, it's a slippery tree. You hold, you're sleeping. You can try to get out, it's slippery. Doctrine can put you in that place. And you're going to die and end up in damnation. I'm preaching this sermon. If you're hearing this, let God speak to your heart. I'm asking you, are you reading? Do you have doctrine? Do you know? Doctrine shapes you. Doctrine puts you on the path. And aims at a target. There is no doctrine with no aim. There is an aim. There is a result they are looking for. There is a target. And Satan knows that. That he can warp you. You know what's interesting? I gave an illustration of an arrow in a bow. When the shaft of an arrow is warped. It's just warped. It's bent a little slightly. No matter how you shoot it, it will never hit the target. And it's true of doctrine. That's what it does. There's doctrine that just warps you a little bit. Oh, you know what? There's so much of that. God wants you to prosper. But he wants you more than your prosperity to get to heaven. Can you get to heaven? This midweek service. As you hear me. Will you be able to get to heaven? Is your aim heaven? In whatever you do. Let your aim be heaven as a Christian. Let it not be my pocket. Let it not be all oh, my children, my family. Yes, those things are important. But I'm telling you there's something more important where you spend eternity. Right now, as I close, this is a midweek service. Let this just echo in your spirit. Let it push you that you know what? Clear your mind that focus on heaven. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed this evening father in the name of Jesus we come to you God and we ask you God to help us God to reach heaven God bless every person God listening to this message tonight to focus God back on heaven not to be removed by the doctrines of this world 
Listen, there's doctrine out there of entertainment. Just felt that to just say that right now. There's a doctrine of entertainment. Video games. This, that is taking people away from the word of God. Telling you, be aware of that. You're not saved, you're not born again. For a moment. You're not saved, you're not born again. Just where you are. Just where you are. Jesus loves you and he's speaking to you right now because he wants you to be with him in heaven forever and ever. That's why he died on the cross and that's the aim of this message. I want you to pray this prayer with me if you're not saved so that you can, be, when you're born again, that warped shaft becomes straight and you're aimed for heaven. You inherit the kingdom of God. Unless a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I've done things wrong. I've offended you, O oh God. I am sorry. Lord, forgive me. And God, come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my soul. Change me. I believe you died on the cross so that I can receive salvation. Forgive me, O oh God. God, make me your child right now. And help me, O oh God, that I'll live with you forever in heaven. Let me not miss heaven, O oh God. Let all things pass away. Let all my sin be washed away. Make me new, O oh God. I thank you, God, for Jesus. Amen. Church, for the rest of us, let me pray for you this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring every person here. God, I pray the delusions, doctrines, God, that are all sorts of doctrines, God, that we hear in the world. Entertainment doctrine, cultural doctrines, family doctrine, God, even on to church doctrines. God, that we hear, we read books, we see videos, God. I pray, God, I renounce, Almighty Father, God. All that, God. And I say to you, O oh God, and I say this to you, God, put us on a pathway, God, that we can reach heaven. Lord, that we'll be with you. Let our doctrine be straightforward that, God, our aim is to get to heaven. Lord, let's take us away from worldliness, the doctrine of the world, the doctrine of the Pharisees. Take us away from that, God. I give you glory and honor. Thank you, God, for this. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, amen. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday evening. Shall see you on Sunday. Amen.